And welcome everybody to another edition of the GSMC Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. As always, I'm your host Kenneth Grunfelder and it's great to have you guys here on this Friday, May 3rd. We have a lot to talk about on the show today. Before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys, as always, to tip or donate and get your comments recognized, make sure to go to the following link, that is gsmcpodcast.net. Again, that really helps the show, makes the show more interactive Between myself, the host, and you guys, the viewers, again, that is gsmcpodcast.net. And as always, it is displayed on the ticker at the bottom of the show segment down below. So, with that being said, let's get into what we are going to talk about for today. So, we're going to talk about more on the 49ers stuff regarding their wide receivers. More comments made by General Manager John Lynch on his commitment to both of these guys because throughout this whole offseason... Especially with Brandon Ayuk, we've just been hearing nothing but trade rumors because of his contract and wanting a new contract. And then when the draft came around, we started hearing some rumors about Debo Samuel maybe being traded. So I'll get into all that in a second. Then in the second part of the show, we'll take a look at some updated Super Bowl odds for each team. I looked at DraftKings, so we'll go based off of those odds, and I'll talk about them, give my thoughts on each team's uh, Super Bowl odds. I mean, well, I'm not going to go through every single team, but we'll go through the teams that have the best odds. And I'll give you my thoughts on that. Then in the third part of the show, we'll take a look at every quarterback that was taken in the first round in the 2024 NFL Draft, and I'll talk about their situations and, you know, if they might have to sit or if they're going to start right away. We'll get into all that as well. So really just kind of an overview on all the quarterbacks that were taken in the first round and, you know, the situations that they were drafted into. And then in the final part of the show, we'll talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers. They uh, declined Najee Harris's fifth-year option. So this is his final year, and we'll see, you know, what happens after 2024 if they bring him back. But they did not pick up his fifth-year option, so I will talk about that as well. So, with that being said, let's get into the first topic, which is talking about the 49ers, which, again, another team that I have talked about a lot because with their receivers, they've been in the news a lot. So, let's get into that. And, yeah, so, more comments from John Lynch. Uh, So, he was on the Pat McAfee show, and he basically was talking about his roster and you know, the stuff revolving around his two receivers. And this is what he said. He said, I love our roster. I'm doing everything in my power to keep our roster together. Uh, And we'll see if he says anything else uh, in the article that I have here. So that was actually his only quote that he said. Okay. So that doesn't, I I thought there was another quote, but I I guess, I guess not. But that's basically what he said. Um, Well, yeah. and, And here's, well, yeah, this is more from the quote. I love our roster and I love the way it's compromised or comprised. I'm doing everything in my power to keep our roster together, and that's my goal. Uh, Debo and Ayuk are guys that we drafted, and we couldn't be more proud of these guys. So that's more from what he said on the Pat McAfee show. And, I I mean, I I do believe him. The 49ers are a team that are in a great position to contend for a Super Bowl. They've come up short a lot these last few seasons. But... It, it, it's it's tough now because you got guys that are going to desire new contracts. And right now you still have Brock Purdy who's not making that much money. But eventually he's going to need a new contract. And I know I've touched upon that this offseason. But so so the window's kind of, you know, right now to get it done while Brock Purdy is still under that rookie contract. Because now when he needs a new contract... It's, it's going to be harder to, you know, keep some of the other guys. But also, is Brock Purdy the long-term answer at quarterback? And, and they definitely view that. But what if Brock Purdy goes out there in 2024 and doesn't play well? Then what? So, they, they, got, they got some decisions that are going to be coming their way that they're going to have to make in the near future. And, yeah, you want to keep everybody. But that's just that's not how it always works. You're going to have to move off of some guys. I mean, look at the Bengals. 
And I've talked about the T. Higgins situation. We talked about that yesterday. They're not going to be able to keep him and Jamar Chase. If they're going to have to pay both receivers, they're not going to be able to do it. They, they, they can't do it. I mean, they can, but then you, you got to address other areas. You're, you know, on the defensive, the defensive side of the ball – and other in other positions as well on the offense, the offensive line. There's, you can't be paying, you know, your your quarterback and your two receivers can't account for most of your cap. You got to be able to spread that around, so you can make sure that other areas are addressed. And that's the same thing with the 49ers. So, they could move off of one of these guys at some point. The Bengals, I I think. And we talked about it in our production meeting yesterday that T. Higgins at some point will get traded. Maybe it's not this year, but it could be next year. So we'll have to we'll have to see. I mean, he is currently under the franchise tag, so you know, if it but we'll see. At some point he he's I, I, long term, he's not going to be a Bengal. But now with these two guys, Debo Samuel and Brandon Ayuk, are they going to be 49ers long term? It, it was interesting hearing Debo Samuel's name being floated around in trade rumors. Because all offseason, all we heard was Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk, Brandon Ayuk. But there was, no, there was really no talk about Debo. And then all of a sudden we get to the draft and... You know, reading, doing some reading and seeing that the 49ers could be more inclined to trade Debo Samuel instead of Ayuk. And they did draft a receiver, Ricky Pearsall. And he's kind of got that similar skill set as Debo Samuel, where you can line him up in the backfield. You can do all these different things with him, like they do with Debo. So, and, you know, with Ayuk, they don't really do that. So, you know, if Pearsall could be that Debo replacement then maybe that's the receiver that ends up going. Now, I it's, I mean, you're hoping that they keep everybody for 2024? I mean, if John Lynch is doing everything he can to make sure that they're all good and they could keep their roster together, you're, you're hoping that, you know, as a Niners fan, that they're all together for this year. Because after this year, who knows? They might be moving off of some guys. They've had to let go of some guys, too. Like, they let go of Eric Armstead on the defensive line, which hurts. So, you know, this is the year to get it done. Because, again, you, you, you could see more guys looking to get paid, including their quarterback. So, you, you want to get it done. Now, can they do it? Yeah. I think they could. Of course, they. Could, I, I believe they can win a Super Bowl. The problem is they've gotten there a couple times and they've lost to the same team. And they had a lead in both games. They had a 10-point lead the first time they played the Niner or the the Chiefs and then you know they had a lead against the Chiefs again and it evaporated because of you know muff pun on special teams. And I don't know. I I mean I don't know what else the 49ers could have did. I mean they could have cashed in on, you know, some Patrick Mahomes turn or the Chiefs turnovers. Mahomes threw a pick and, um, and Pacheco fumbled. But the Niners didn't cash in. And I thought they did play a solid game. But they didn't do they didn't do enough. And again, another thing that I've talked about all off season, and Mahomes said it again recently is that they they are really guaranteeing this three peat. They they really want this to happen. And they got a great chance to. And I, I think the offense is going to be better. You know, they kept, they were able to bring back Chris Jones, they you know, extended Andy Reid and the guys in the front office and Travis Kelsey got a pay raise. They're ready to go. But that's if you get to the Super Bowl. With the NFC, you know the Lions are not going away. The Packers got better. Uh, the Eagles got better. 
Dallas kind of stayed the same, and the 49ers own Dallas, so not really going to put them in. I, I, th I think the Eagles are better than Dallas right now because the Eagles got better. Dallas, like, just stayed the same. Now, Dallas could still – now, again, Dallas played very well against the Eagles last year. They could, they could have won both games. But the Eagles, they improved on defense, so we'll see how that matches up when these two teams meet in the fall or whenever they play. They play later in the season. We get more towards the winter, but yeah, you'll, you'll see at least one matchup early on in the season, I would, ima I, I would imagine. But that's really... I, 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 I mean, the teams in their own division, the 49ers, I, I, I think they're better. I mean, the Rams are going to be good, even without Aaron Donald. They're, they're going to be a good team. You got the Seahawks, who are going to be a good team. But, you know, they still got some questions at quarterback, and we'll see how that plays out. I, and the 49ers are better than every team in the, in the South, in the NFC South. So, really, I look at, and back to the, the NFC North, I said the Lions and the Packers. I love what the Bears have done. The Vikings have a solid roster, but the 40, the, the, you got two rookie quarterbacks and Sam Darnold, if Sam Darnold starts with the Vikings. So, the, Bear, the Bears got to show us first that they belong before we could start talking about, oh man, they could be, they're one of the better teams in the NFC. So, right now, the three teams are the Packers, the Lions, and the Eagles. Those are, those are the three teams. And the Eagles, they've, already, they've beaten the 49ers before. Now, that was in the NFC Championship game, and Brock Purdy got hurt. And we'll see if the Eagles can recapture that 2022 magic and bring it into 2024. Because now you got Saquon Barkley, and like I said, you address the secondary, you address the defense as a whole this offseason, both in the draft and in free agency. So they should be better. They should be back to more of the 2022 Eagles and not the 2023 Eagles where they just collapse towards the end of the year. New coordinators. So, yeah, they're going to be a problem. The Lions are going to be a problem. The Lions were up 17 against the Niners in the NFC Championship game. The Packers were up against the Niners in the divisional round. Those two teams, they should have, the Niners should have got knocked off. They shouldn't even have been in the Super Bowl. But they came back and they got to it, but they couldn't get the job done against the Chiefs. So, I look at those three teams as the biggest competitors to the Niners right now is the Packers, the Lions, and the Eagles. So we'll have to wait and see. But you want to make – I mean, John Lynch, again, he's going to do everything he can to make sure that this roster stays together. But, he's again, in the long term, you might not be able to keep everyone. It's going to be hard. It's going to be hard. And guys are getting older. So you really, this is a, this is a, the year to do it. And it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, those two games against the Packers and the Lions, they almost lost those games. Those, th those games were at home. They were down 17 to the Lions at home. And I think the Lions are going to want to get back to that point again and you got the Packers who finished the year strong won a playoff game had a chance to beat the Niners but it didn't happen and then you have the Eagles who you know got stomped by the Niners in the regular season I think they're going to they're going to have a little bit of motivation too so We'll have to wait and see, but, you know, you hear the general manager talking for the Niners. He wants to make sure that he keeps the roster together, and we'll see if he stays true to his uh, his word and whether or not they move off of one of their receivers and opt to go with, you know, some of the younger guys that they've drafted. But 
again, we'll keep an eye on it. So let me know what you guys think about what John Lynch had to say. Who's more likely to be moved if the Niners do move off of a receiver? Is it Debo? Is it Ayuk? Let me know in the comments because, again, we're going to be talking about this a lot even throughout the season. Maybe something happens before we even get to the season and someone ends up getting traded. So so when we come back from our first break of the show, we'll talk about the Niners during this segment, and that is we will talk about uh, the updated Super Bowl odds after the draft. I'll go through each team, or most of the teams, what their odds are going into next season. And that, yeah, that's, so that's what we'll do when we come back from our first break of the show. So with that being said, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. <laughs> 